Uh, there we go. We're recording now. Right, so um, I was doing a little bit of chit chat there before I started recording for those of you in the, in the live session. But let's start this thing proper. So it is just after 12 p.m. UK time on Friday, the 16th of October. The session today that we're running is a session whether you're on whichever program you're on a dpg community we can we can see on your webcam then you're all right um whichever whichever program you're on even if you're not on a program with dpg and with dpg you're welcome to be in this this webinar now absolutely um happy to help out um, with uh, professional development that's the focus of the, of the community so that's what we're going to do we're going to look at references manually adding references to your assessments manually when you get some examples up on the screen some that i've tried to do and hopefully i can get some examples from you and actually do some live and get our teeth into into some live references if you um i suppose if, if that's a thing if you can even do that okay uh, let's get some housekeeping out of the way and let's do and let's get started let's move these slides on one there we go. So standard sort of um, communicating during the webinar type um, slide there. OK, um, so what we can see on screen is the box on the left talks about using the audio to communicate with me just because of the size of the the, the amount of people that have registered. I popped everyone on mute right now. So if you are talking away to me, I'm really sorry I can't hear. Um, if we need to, I'll, I'll, I'll unmute people as we go. But just with the size of the group, I tend to get a lot of feedback. So I've just knocked it down to um, to, um, to to mute setting at this point. Um, I can see um, looks like Francesca is having um, issues hearing us. Um, no worries, Jenny. Um, let's see if uh, Frances Francesca can hear us. What we need Francesca to do, uh, let's just send her a quick um, message. Um, let me, um, do, you, do you have headphones? Um, oh, she says you can hear now. I'll stop typing. That's good news. Right, so you got your audio sorted out, Francesca. That's, that's good news. Right. So, yeah, we're on mute. The middle box um, you've got there is so you can put your hand up. If you've been to one of these go to meetings with DPG before, you've probably seen that the little ability to put your hand up if you want to uh, get my attention. Um, let's give it a quick trial run. Hit that hand up button now if you if you can see it. Uh, the little image that looks like a, a hand. Press that. Wonderful. People are pressing it. So if you need my attention, that's one way to get hold of me to give me a little wave. That's it. Brilliant. People pressing up and down. Fantastic. Wonderful. Put your hands down now. So that, that's that's that bit working. Uh, yeah, we just got a couple. Oh, how was it? Hi, right. Hi, Howard. How are you doing, sir? Um, got your hand up. Hope you well. And then uh, next, last thing we'll do is box on the right. Talking about uh, the chat box. Most of you seem to have found the chat box. People say hi in the chat box. That's great. So we'll be jumping in that chat box to uh, get your input as we go through the session. That's a kind of uh, hi Howard. Uh, that's that's the kind of um, bulk of the housekeeping. Other things to, to make you aware of. If we do get you on audio, well, the session's being recorded, so bear that in mind. What you say will be recorded, and if there's any conversations going on around you, they can get picked up as well in the recording. If you type in anything in the chat box, that doesn't show up on the screen for the recording. Obviously, it shows up in the, in the live session for the benefit of the other people in the session. So if, um, but most of the time, if questions come in the chat box, I'll read them out anyway to help me keep up to date with what, what's going on. If you'd rather I didn't read out what you put in the chat box, you can set your chat chat box to send me a private message. And I'll take that a hint that you don't want me to read it out. But for the, the most part in these webinars, people leave their chat setting to entire audience because a little bit of so, social collaboration is a good thing. Right, let's move on from the housekeeping. Let's move on. Um, what have we got? What's the next slide? I think it might be the agenda. Uh, did you register and press that button? No, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Agenda. So takeaways. I'll start thinking about what you're for the takeaway tonight. I don't have a spell takeaway, right? If it's one word or hyphenated. So um, let's not make a big deal of it. Focus. <laughs> um, right, here's our agenda. What we're going to do is 
we'll have a little bit of a, of a, of a check that we're all on the same page with um, referencing what's a citation and in text, what's a reference list at the end of a document. We just have a little bit of a scene set to make sure we're all using the same language. Then we'll find out a little bit, get a little bit of chat going in the chat box with a bit of an icebreaker. So about 10 minutes, I think that's probably going to take us. Then we'll have a little bit of a look at some of your options for automatic, automated referencing. Uh, it is a lot easier than doing it manually, um, but some people, as I'm, I picked up from the forums, haven't got the functionality to do to do, um, uh, to do automated referencing. That's why you want to come and do um, manual referencing, or you may just want to come along and, and learn how to do it because it's a good skill to have. But we'll, we'll do a little look at. Um, automating your referencing um, to tick that box off so that's only going to take about two minutes and then we'll spend the bulk of the the session actually what you're here for to look at some examples of how to manually reference okay so there's a lot of chat box I've, so i've got a lot of chat going on it's, it's fantastic to see keep chatting away if you think if you put something in there and you think i've missed it start waving with the hand up type it back in something like that um and i'll, I'll try and uh, i'll try and keep my eyes on oh, i've got three screens on the go here like some kind of um 80s bad guy sat in a bad a bunker playing a uh, war games or something um right let's have a look uh i digress summary summary is the last thing we'll do we'll recap and find out what you've learned from the session so i'll be asking you things at the end of the session like right how do you um what have you taken away from the session how are you feeling things like that but that said, in preparing ourselves for our summary, let's get that right now. Let's do a little scaling exercise now. So in terms of how you, how confident you feel in building a manual reference right now, let's have, let's have a score. Give me a score in the chat box. Score one to 10. One, um, you, you know, you wouldn't know where to start. 10, you think you're absolutely fine. Let's have a scale somewhere in between. I'll try and read out some of them. Or you'll see some of them going up in the chat box. So one, don't know how to manually reference. 10, you, you're, you're, you're better than me, um, let's say. Uh, we scale, okay, so we haven't got a score over six yet. So that's good. So I think, I mean, that shows we're in the right room. Someone comes along and says, I know all about referencing. You might be in the wrong webinar. 11 there we go howard take a mic for me sir <laughs> um uh, he says he's just kidding uh that's good stuff right so um yeah all right well all mainly below fives well let's the, the objective then is going to be to see if we can increase your score so at the end of the session we'll ask how that score has changed okay um and let's 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 um, see if we can do something about it right agenda done behind us let's move on let's have a look um he doesn't like it when i press that i need to do it twice there we go so we're going to set the scene let's gain some agree let's get some agreement on what we're talking about here with with referencing i'm going to pull up um a some of my work actually what are my assessments that i've been using for my um ldm qualification so no cheating no copying because I'm not going to tell you if I've passed or not yet. Um, so this is something I've done. So it's I put something I've done. So it's an original piece of work. I'm not using someone else's. Right. If we start talking about an indexation, I'll make this a little bit bigger. That bit I've highlighted in yellow. Where's uh, he gone? Da, 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 da. Oh, we can't see. It. I haven't pressed pause. There we go. Put that on. It's a piece of my work coming up on your screen now. There we go. You should be able to see that just rolling up and down the page. Let's find something that I have where I've done an in-text citation. There we go. Highlighted yellow. Don't don't highlight your references in yellow. I just did that so I could pick it out for the sake of this demonstration. So you can see there, there's uh, an element in brackets. That's your in-text citation. If I start talking about your in-text citation, I'm on about that bit in the brackets. OK, we can see here next to this particular one, there are some uh, quotation marks. We'll talk about that as if that's your the, the, the quote if we're going to use a quote, because we have, do have other options. But certainly the in-text citation, I'm talking about that a bit in the brackets, as opposed to at the end of the document, down in my somewhere, I've highlighted the entry that mirrors, that or not mirrors it, um, relates to it, to the in-text citation. Um, what relates to the in-text citation is this bit here in yellow, and that's my, we'll call it our reference, list entry 
or words to that effect. So we have a difference. We have an in-text citation and you enter it in your reference list. Okay, anybody need me to go through that again? Are you happy that I've made that differentiation clear with in-text citation, entry and reference list? How are we feeling about that? Let's get some words in the chat box, see what people think. If anybody wants me to go through it again, we'll, we'll do that now. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, can you do both in your work? Uh, Jacqueline, let me know a bit more about what you mean, because I've done both of my, in my work there. Let me know if, if I've got that. Um, everyone said, OK, happy, all clear, good, understood. Wonderful, wonderful, great stuff. Let's see what Jacqueline's going to tell us a little bit more. Uh, get some thumbs up. Oh, great stuff. Oh, thumbs up, so that's good. So, I, I mean, that probably means Helen's using a, a smart device. It's always cool to have people in in sessions from using smart devices. Digression again. Let's get back to the uh, where, we, where we were going to be. So that's set the scene. Let's get the slide back on so I can try and keep on track. Here we go. Let's have a look what's our next thing. Um, Jacqueline says, so I can do both types of referencing in one chunk of my work. Both types of referencing. If you get in your work, you need both. You need the in-text citation in the text, and then right at the bottom, you need that entry in that references list. Because like if the in-text citation is is um, if you think about it like an address, your in-text citation is your postcode, whereas the entry in the references list is the full written house number, your street name, your county you live in, is that full address? If you see, maybe maybe. Maybe I hope that's a useful analogy, but that's kind of how we're putting it across. Let's do the icebreaker. All right, Jacqueline says that's clear. Let's get you typing in some, some answers to these questions and see what you think. So why do we need to reference? What's the point of referencing? What happens if we don't reference? Start typing in your thoughts on that. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, plagiarism, good boy, plagiarism, perfect. That's a big thing. Copywriting, yes. Um, Lisa's put prosecuting, <laughs> well, I guess you could be. And now here's an interesting one. So they're all actually, the answers I'm after, plagiarism, avoiding plagiarism, um, copyright. But another key one I'm looking for from Holly there, straight in there with give a credit to other people's, uh, for, for their work, to others' work. That's exactly what it is. Um, yes, Jane, exactly. Acknowledging, acknowledging other people. This is, um, yes, Rachner's all good. Uh, as Lisa, don't worry <laughs> uh, about the caps. That's good. Credit to others. Show that we use concepts. Oh, all right, interesting one there. That one from Katie as well. Show that we use um, con uh, concepts. I'm going to build on that. Jacqueline, yep, yeah, totally agreed with you there in the chat box. So, one uh, another reason that I can think of is if you are talking about a concept or something, um, if you're kind of saying, um, well, one I've used in demonstrations before is saying that the word HRM or the term human resource management came about in the 1960s. OK, I've, I've written that in a piece of work somewhere, okay, somewhere. But you need something to underpin that to say, you know, you didn't pull that out of the sky. You didn't make that up, did you? Where have you got the information from? So you underpin that concept with, you know, that was written in such and such a book and said by such and such a person. So you you, you underpin what your um, concept or your opinion or, or your answer is. Um, that's another good way to do it. So if you've written um, unemployment rates are at this amount, well, let's find out where did you get that? Where did you get that from? So it, it, it helps to helps people to helps to demonstrate that you haven't just made that up it's an actual thing so that's the other reason we do it to underpin your work evidence yes lucy mentions evidence it's exactly what it is okay cool uh, let's move on from that one then next one let's have a look at that next question we have on the screen um, real quick difference between a reference list and a bibliography that one usually comes up so let's get that one out of the way first what do we think of that reference list bibliography? What, so why do we need, you know, tell me about, we've got two of them. I'll put my work back up on screen again. Uh, there we go. should come up, there we go. I have a reference list and I have a bibliography list. You need that at the end of your document. You need the two separate ones. 
Let's have a look. Why do we need them? What are they for? Tell me the differences. Um, let's have a little bit of a look at that. I should put my slide back on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, bibliography or research reference is what I'm referring to in my work. Exactly. Exactly, Jenny. That's exactly what it is. Um, there's that distinction. Let's have a look at that distinction of other people's words. Um, bibliography bibliography is not easy, it's easy to say it refers to all the resources we've used let's have a look um, let's see what people it's always it's um you know whatsapp or messenger when you can see people are typing i don't have that function on this this uh on these webinars so i don't know if you're typing <laughs> just kind of like tread water and see if people are writing in massive paragraphs um let's see okay uh, nothing's coming up yet so i'll carry on talking i'll carry on firing more questions at you let's see what we get to but if you are typing in carry on typing your answers but the answers we've got they're they're great answers um the top and the bottom of it is if you are using someone else's work or this direct quotation or you're rewording someone else's work that needs to be in your references list if it's just background reading your views to give you ideas to give you sort of bouncing off points if it's if you've read something and thought well that's told me something that i didn't know but i'm not actually going to directly quote it that goes in your bibliography your um your uh, list of books or oh, list of sources i shouldn't call them books should i right let's have a quick one then uh, another quick question before we move on what are you on a program if you're on a program let us know what program you're on Let's see who's where. Just a out there question, completely off, off track. Just interested. Let's see. Yeah, good. Yes, recognise. Uh, oh, got a question there. Do, uh, Rachel says, do you need to include YouTube and social media in your bibliography? If you use, <laughs> if you use videos, definitely you can use them in your, your bibliography. Um, regardless of the source, it could have been YouTube, it could have been another source. Um, social media, if it's someone's blog, if it's a legitimate source, yeah, absolutely. Lots of people on uh, level five, a uh, level seven there, uh, level five, someone on level three, L and D, good stuff, a uh, first module, level five, so level five, seven, good stuff. So finding out also lots of people. It's straight across the board there, I think is, is the key answer. Um, it looks like you're mostly doing HR. Oh no, there's some L and D's in there. That's good. That's good. So we've got a bit of a mix really. Excellent. Right. Okay. I was just interested. Just being nosy. Okay. Let's move on. Let's have a look at the next section. What we're going to do. So we've set. I think we set the scene. We've got some sort of chat going in the in the chat box. Feel free to chat amongst yourselves, whilst I try and get PowerPoint to respond to my clicks. Third thing on the agenda was automated referencing. If you want to reference automate. Uh, Automate your reference. If you want Word to take the mither out of doing this for you, I don't know if you've seen this or if this is an option for you, but you can get Word to do it for you. Um, I'll quickly show you this. Let me know in the chat box if this isn't an option for you. For example, it could be that you haven't got Word um, or you just don't want to do it. But if I just quickly put my work back on the screen again, let's flick that back on there. There's this um, references button up here. Uh, you, can, you should be able to see that at the top of the page there. We'll actually do your referencing for you. Don't know if you know that. Um, ah, perfect. Well, Jenny says she wants to. She wants both options and wants to decide. Makes absolute sense to me. But there is a way to do it. Um, get get a word to do it there for you. Um, ah, yes. There we go. Uh, Helen works on an iPad, so that's typical kind of um, something that I can understand that it's not going to work on an iPad. So we need a, we need another option. So perfectly um makes sense if you want to have a look at the automated option and haven't had chance okay i've done a couple of videos that explain how to do it so what i'm going to do is do my best right now to put links to the um the sessions into the chat box no i'm not because you're not going to let me uh, wait about me a second um let's just pause that let's go to let me find out how this is gonna work here we go right found it right if you do want to watch a video on how to 
uh, who you're referencing are in in an automated way using Word. Copy that link I've just put in there, and that'll show you a video of me, a short video showing you how to do it. If you want to know how to do a bibliography in an automated way using Word, use that second link I've just popped in there. So there's a couple of links in there. Um, that's automated though. That's automated covered. If, if that's an option, <coughs> have a look at those. Again, I'll put a forum post in the middle of the homepage in the community where we can all chat about what you think of the videos and what you think of, every, um, of this, this webinar as well. And we can all do that later on. Right. Now we're doing for time. That's, that's enough now. Let's get to the actual what we're, we're here to do. Let's go into the wonderful magical world of, of uh, manual referencing. Um, let's take a look at that. Hang on a second. Let's put this up on your screen. I've got to watch that button. Talking and pressing button at the same time. Uh, there we go. I should say manual referencing on your page. Now I've got quite a blank uh, page for that because <coughs> I want to start um, actually jump in and have a look. Um, Lucy says, do they reference them in order and use those, those automated tools? It, it, it alphabetizes them. Is that a word? Yeah, puts them in alphabetical order for you. Um, neatens it all up, it's really good. Right, manual references. Okay, I'm gonna go and have a look at one. Okay, if you've got one that you, you've got a book or a website or something that you really wanna reference right now, it would be perfect if you popped it in the, in the, in the chat box now and we can work through it on a blank piece of paper. Otherwise, I'm going to go and have a look at how to do this manually. Okay, um, so I'm about to go uh, and try. So this is this is live. So let's see how we get on. Um, right, let's have a look. Let's find something we want to um, reference. No one's typing anything in. Bear with me a second. I'm going to put something on the screen. And uh, let's get us a reference to work with. Uh, got the wrong screen on. Hang on. Uh, that one. Here we go. Uh, let's go to, I don't know. Let's pick a web page and take a look at something. See where we get to. All right, this will do. This will do. put some point up on your screen now. Just a web page, a journal page. Let's have that screen now. <coughs> there we go. Distance learning. Um, it's just back from when I was in a piece on distance learning. So let's say I want to. Um, Look at this. In fact, in fact, hmm, should, is, it, is it better to do a journal first, or should we do a, just a general web page first? We do a journal. It's a little bit um, different with a journal. I think we're probably better picking a web page first. Standard issue web page. Let's have another look at a different one. Um, hmm, let's see. What's this one? Hmm. Let's just put that up on the screen. There you come. I've got a black screen in a minute. There we go. Right, here we go. Here's, here's, a, uh, here's a web page. Tell me about a, a benchmark and report. Okay. Uh, let's decide I want to I want to quote this page. Okay, let's have a look. Um, something that I can I can quote. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Some words that I can quote. This is down. It's a download. Uh, this is not going to me at all. Bear with me, folks. Anyone got a reference I can use? Just need to get something. I don't do not want to use someone else's download right now because um, it's just going to make things a bit tricky. Um, let's have a look at this one. Uh, BBC News. Yeah, uh, we can do that, can we? Let's get the BC news on there. Uh, let's try that. That's not a bad idea at all, actually, because it's live and um, live and, and, and where we want it. Let's find something we want. 
put as an example in our work. Let's find something about coronavirus, seeing as it's always always going to be here right now. Let's find something about that. And let's say, there we go, perfect. Right, let's say I want to say, I want to quote the fact that there are, good Lord, 20, 27,900 new cases uh, a day in England. I want to I want to quote that. Okay, let's have a look at how we're going to manually reference that. So let's put that in my work somewhere. So we'll imagine I've been writing uh, my answer and at some point I've decided to underpin my work by using that quote. There we go. Uh, right, there we go, put it in there. Okay, there we go. So imagine, imagine, imagine there's a there's a, a long sort of sentence or a long sentence, a bit of a paragraph around that and I've been typing in and sharing my thoughts on what I think of that and then I've backed up my thoughts with that particular um, fact. Um, so what I don't want to do then is just leave that there because I need to sort of tell people where I got that information for, where I got that actually from. Have I just, you know, pulled that from the sky? Well, no, I haven't. So there's a few things you can do. And I'm going to do is use a, a document um, that I've had some success with in the past. And you'll find it in your materials on this particular um, e-lesson. So it will work for you. OK, so what we would do is with this particular one. Uh, let's put this, this on screen. The easiest thing to do. Is you need the author's name and you need the um, the date normally uh, in terms of the year in bracket in brackets here. Okay, so you need typically need that there as your in-text citation. So of course we knew on this particular example using um, one is BBC News. Yeah, we knew that was an easy one, and we know happen to know it's 2020. I know off the top of my head. So I can put that in, that's my in-text citation done, that's the end of that sentence, and I can carry on talking. Now you can put it at the end of the, after the quote like that, or if you have a little bit more in that sentence you want to put in there, put it at the end of the sentence, either is fine. So that's your in-text citation. Sometimes that can be tricky to find that information, let's have a look. Obviously I know it's the BBC on, on this particular one. Sometimes you might, if it's a particular author, you might find the name up here at the top somewhere. That can be quite good, but we'll, we'll assume this is a corporate author in, in terms of the, <coughs> the BBC. And four minutes ago, so I know it was made in 2020. Sometimes with websites, you scroll to the bottom and they have a date somewhere that tells you, um, and that usually indicates when the last time the page was updated. So you can often use that as a date in your in your reference team. OK, so that can go in there. So that's set for my index citation. We're all good. Now I need to know what I want to put in my reference list down at the bottom of the page. So now I'm going to do a lot of jumping between two screens. So just bear with me on this one. Let's get my work back up on screen there. Uh, there we go. Right. So let's imagine I've, I've done the rest of my work, I've done all, everything, and I go at the bottom of the page and I want to put my references list in here. I'm going to put it in here. Now I need to know how to make the next entry look like um, look like one of these ones, all formatted in the correct way. Ignore the highlights. Um, you know, which bits are in italics? Where did the comma go? Do we need the, the, the URL? Do we need the date? They need to look like that. So that's what we're about to we're about to try and um, do. Um, Helen says, if you don't cite date, will it be referred? Not necessarily. Um, it's a good question there from Helen. If you can't find the date, my first recommendation would be to try and find, really, really, really try and find a source that has got a date. I would kind of bump it down and sort of think, if I was doing it, I think I don't really want to go with something that's, that, that hasn't got a date. It's not the best kind of source to have. So I would try and find a, a different one that has got a date. If you really, really can't find anything that has, has, has a date, what you can do instead, um, oh, don't want uh, my Windows Explorer up. What you can do in, instead is put N 
dot d in there as in no date but you know you've got to bear in mind that now my reference isn't going to seem as 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 legitimate as one that did have a date so you know if somebody looks at your work and it's full of um nds in terms of dates then you know people are going to think well how reliable is this you know what i mean so avoid that way you can really look for a solution um, with a date as much as you can um same with author katie says same same with author again avoid it if you can because you're kind of saying to someone i'm referencing this but i've no information where it came from um so again it's, it's just not it's just not great in terms of best practice in terms of academic reliability um sort of lessen the legitimacy i suppose of the source if you can't find the author's name if you can't find the name um some people will find you see that some people put something like anon in there yeah i'm referencing someone that hasn't given me the name yeah i'd, I'd try try not to do it if you if you could i try and stick with something where you you know the um you know the author's name as much as you can or the or the, the the corporate author if you like in this case like the bbc um but certainly it's not it's not an immediate refer if you if you do it if it works in them then yeah it, it, it makes your work questionable which could lead to refer it's 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 checks and balances i think on that one but anyway, let's have a look at what we need to put in this reference list. Now, this is where I start jumping around between different screens. I'm going to bring on the document that I've put in the, in, in the material section. It's, it's a slightly older document. Um, I did a while back, so it has an older DPG logo on it somewhere. So you just have to ignore that. If we have a look at this document, it starts off with talking about why you reference and what you can reference. It's quite a hefty file, so it jumps a little bit when I go down the page. And then we're going to look, and then it's got um information on how to put the reference in the text okay so they, here i think it actually talks about um um what to do if there's no date and if there's no name they come up on your screen yes there's actually some information in there on how to do that and then how to do the reference in the list which is what we're up to now that's what we're going to do we're going to look at the um putting that in there There's a few tips in here like putting it in alphabetical order by the author's last name what to do if there are multiple works there's a few general tips in here um what else is on here that you want to pick out yeah there's some information in there that's, that's that should help you in terms of what's happening in the references heading All right but now i'm going to introduce you to that how good does that look <laughs> if you can see that but what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the fact we're going to choose our, our source type using this matrix up at the top so we're going to choose the fact that we are looking at a website without an author's name let me zoom in a bit let's make that a wee bit bigger there we go there we go so we're looking at a website without an author's name at this point yeah that bbc one we don't know who's reading it we just know it's bbc okay so let's see what we're going to do now is where i have written 6 8 16 12 24 okay we're going to use that in this matrix down below to know that our reference needs to, in the reference list needs to be written needs to have number six the website name with a little comma uh, number eight in brackets we'll put the year of the publication and 16 we're going to put the name the page title in italics um, with a full stop 22 we're going to put right the fact that it was online in those square brackets and then number 34 where's that gone? and then we're going to put the the url accessed date month dot year okay that's how we do manual referencing. Okay, so this is going to take me about five, ten minutes to, to, to write out, but th this is what this is what we're going to do, yeah. Uh, so that's what we'll do. So let's get started. So I need you to try and remember 6, 8, 16, 22, because I'm going to jump between these two or three times. Let's start with six and a six and a comma. Easy. Well, we can do that. We know that it is uh, BBC News comma right got that next one please 
eight was a brackets the year of publication with a full stop right in brackets the year of publication with a full stop okay what do you think i haven't asked you any questions for a while is that following roughly what i'm doing it's there i picked that six out and i've picked that eight out from that list there and i'm following that anyone got any questions on what i'm actually doing here linking up that little matrix or can i carry on how do you feel let me know in the chat box um you love this format excellent all okay uh oh, jenny's happy with this great um wish you had this matrix at the beginning wonderful um uh, okay uh they all get checked usually the people will usually your, your assessors will have a look at your preferences yeah all makes sense all good matrix is clear right let's carry on let's carry on with it now we need number 16 page title in italics with a full stop it looks like let's go back to our website there you go page title that was a page title was it pretty good uh what does it say there page title in italics number 16 with a full stop okay back to my work that's this is, i'm going to press paste this it's probably going to go huge there we go um let's just change the format on that a wee bit probably 11 probably i don't know i think i don't know I'll do this later on um a little brown then so that needs to be needs to be a full stop and that needed to be in italics just that bit needed to be in italics okay <clears throat> back to my page that was 16 22 was i need to write online in those little square brackets because i've done 16 yeah done 16 22 let's give that one a go right so where are those square brackets gone there they are online I think there was a full stop afterwards. Let me just check that. Uh, 22. There was no full stop. Okay, that's no problem. I'll get rid of that full stop in a second. Then the last one was 34. So that's getting a little bit more, whoop, a little bit more complicated. Right down at the bottom. Sorry if that's too small. If that's too small, let me know. I'll zoom in a bit. So I have to put, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that because it might help me a little bit. Uh, that one let me just do that so available at so i'm going to keep available at i'm going to paste the url there so i need to get the url there's the url get that copy that and to there copy the url in there then I'm going to have the accessed date. So it is what are we on now? Did I say 16th? 16th. Uh, let's have that 16th of October. I shouldn't think the format of the actual date matters, whether you use numbers or whether you use um, figures, uh, because ultimately the information there is correct. You should be actually fine. Okay, make the right size. Make sure that's all. If I can do it all that way, it doesn't need to be in bold. Make it all the right font or the same font. Doesn't matter which font you use. All the same size. There we go. That's a reference dump. Manually reference something. Okay, what do we think? Um, let's see. How do you do the square brackets? Good. I mean, that's perfect. People open each other out um if i can't recall the date access can i put in an estimated date now the right answer for me to say here the, the true answer is to, is to write you know make note of these things as you go so yeah that's the thing to do the thing with the reason why you're putting the date in one of the reasons i think is why you're putting the date in because of course um websites change so if i looked at a website in may and then i put the fact in, in that i'm referencing it and someone looks at a web page now it may have changed so the assessor would be like well that's not it's not on that web page and you can you kind of say well, yeah but it was in may when i looked at it so that's what you why you're trying to do it um yeah try and remember that date uh, but i forget the year 
I did forget the year. It just says year there, doesn't it? That's no good. Yeah, there we go. So that's that done. So that should should uh, all the commas in the right places, bits in italics, bits in brackets you need. Let's have another flick back at our page here. Uh, where can you find the matrix, Katie says. If you click on the materials button on your dashboard right now, you should find two documents. Um, one of them is called the DPG referencing guide, and that's the one I'm looking at. One of them says the referencing uh, guide overview, and that's a newer version um, that's kind of, it's a, lot, it's, a, it's a lot nicer laid out, but it doesn't have a matrix. Um, it, it, has, it has general tips. So if you look at this matrix, what, what you can do then, you can say, well, actually, um, I got my source from a book. Okay, well, now what I need to do is I need to do number one, number eight, number 10, and so on. And well, that's how you can do it. That's how you can do it. What do you think? Are we, um, are we doing all right? Does anybody want me to have another go? Because I'm hoping that that's got it. I'm hoping that's cracked it. Unless anybody has a particular book or a particular, um, or somebody mentioned um, as an ACAS site above, which is which is great. Uh, but the the the, thought, the layout will be exactly the same for your reference as I've just done. Things to look out for then is it'll tell you on this document that you've seen. Let me know if you've got any questions about if you've directly quoted someone, you know, you need to use um, speech marks or um, inverted commas. Or if you're just rewording someone else's work, don't use speech marks or commas, but they still need a reference. Got any questions on that? Can let me know. Um, all oh, right, it says, uh, Jenny says, would the DPG eLearn videos come under online video? Now, <clears throat> I think probably what's happening there, I think probably Jenny's question is about referencing some of DPG's stuff. Um, it's probably not the answer you want right now. Uh, I would try and avoid referencing DPG's um, material if you can. Now, it's all legitimate, it's all well written, but it's not in the public domain. So it's for that reason. I mean, your assessor is does has access to DPG material. So if you really, really needed to, Yes, you can, because your assessor will be able to go to DBG and check that reference and check where you got it from. But let's say you were handing your report into your manager, and your manager hasn't got access to DPG report material, they can't check that reference. So if you can, again, try and find a source that's out there um, in, the, in the sort of public domain as much as you can. But if you really, really can, then you could, you could do it as a video. Yeah, but I'd really recommend you, you try and get a source and, and with all sources really try and get a source as close to the original source as you can sometimes you'll sign, find sources where somebody's quoting someone else that can be used but again if you can go to the original source it does make it that bit more it's better, better practice i suppose ac academically um Let's see. Um, oh, there's a good question from uh, Lani. Why Wikipedia is not recognised as a reliable source for referencing? <clears throat> it's, yeah, it's not seen as an academically sound source because um, with Wikipedia pages, my understanding is that anybody can post up on, on, on Wikipedia um, and write what they want. So it doesn't have to be, um, it's not sort of, doesn't necessarily be research based it doesn't necessarily there's no way of telling if it's correct um there's no way of telling if um there's any kind of um unscrupulous writing in there for, for, for any sort of um um malicious reasons or anything like that so you don't know if it's actually legitimate um it used to be like this this fact that there's only actually four people employed by wikipedia and the rest of the publications were done by members of the public i don't i doubt that's still true but it's that kind of thing it's 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 a, it could be written by anyone. Mm. Right. Um, oh, some more questions coming in. This is good. Lucy said, with interviews, is using the same GDPR compliant or is the full name not given? With interviews, is using the name GDPR uh, compliant or is the... F so if you're referencing an interview that did with an actual person and you're trying to stay on the right side of GDPR, now there's a good question, Lucy. What you could do with that... If you've actually used a ref, uh, an interview and maybe you've got a record of the answers, what you could do is put the whole thing in your appendix in your assessment, but black out that person's name. 
and, you, and, and you, I'm sure your assessor will understand why you've blanked out that person's name. But if you wanted to, absolutely nothing wrong, wrong with putting a little note on there saying, you know, I've um, eliminated the person's name for GDPR purposes or, or words to that effect. Yeah. Jacqueline says, is there such a thing as too much referencing? I've never come across it. <clears throat> I know we've got Howard online. I know he does references with us. So if you've ever come across that with us, uh, Howard, let us know. Um, I'm going to go back to the slides because um, we don't have too much time left, but I'm still happy to take questions if you've got them. Uh, and let's get back to there. Because we do have till, till one o'clock. Uh, does that come up on your screen? Let's just check. Oh, my boxes have uh, shrunk. There we go. Summary. So my summary screens, if you've ever been in a webinar with me before, you know I don't have things on my summary screens. Um, there we go. Howard's point, how, that's a good, yes, I, I totally agree with, I, I think what Howard's alluding to there probably with your own thoughts, is sometimes we see the assessments is people just copying um, and pasting out of the internet sections, referencing them uh, legitimately and putting them in there, but it's, it's what, what what is being looked for is all right okay well what's your thoughts around that we know what the the academics say but what links can you bring to the the example you're talking about how can you link it to your case study or your own organization or how can you balance it against another argument the the what the the whole point of these assessments is to look at your understanding so do make sure you you do some um yeah as 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 um how would say in there to make sure you've got plenty of pros in there narrative in there to justify your position whether you think this is a good thing or you think that's a bad thing it needs to be in there well summary okay let's make sure we're, we're, we're moving on with a summary let's start with let's start with an open question okay if you could type into the chat box now something that you are taking away from the session Okay, something you know now that you didn't know 49 minutes ago. Type something in the chat box there. Let's see what you think. In the meantime, while you're doing that, I'm going to do some typing. Uh, I'm going to do some typing. What I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to start a new forum. I'll start the new forum in the L&D uh, forum because we're all learning things. I think I'm going to start a forum there. And I'm going to put in here um, about this session while you're typing in your answers. Uh, first answer we've got, we've got how to reference confidently uh, from Louise. We've got Matrix. We've got uh, Matrix from Jacqueline. The Matrix has you, I suppose, of the tag or something, wasn't it? Word document functionalities. Oh, Lucy found out about this. Let's think about uh, what did you think of the webinar about... Uh, manually referencing referencing um let's put video here i'll put a little brackets here so what i'm going to do is put in here and, and i'm going to post the recording of this video into this box later on once the um once the site's finished um publishing it okay um uh, what are your thoughts on the? Oh, I keep that. No, let's see. Let's see. Let's write something else in there. Don't just want to um, repeat the the title. Keep us up to date with uh, how you are getting on with referencing. Um, questions welcome. Questions welcome. Well, let's have a little smiley face. Let's check my face and my um, not referencing. I want thanks, Grammarly, but I want referencing. Uh, oh dear, how you are getting on? Um, and I'll put a link to recording. So I'll put that link in. I'll come back and edit my post in a little while. Um, and put the link into the, so let's get that published. Let's put a little tag in there. 
and then I'll put this in the um, a chat box. Please select a category. Which one do we need? Probably that one. Uh, there we go. It should work now. I'll pop this. I'll pop a link to this into the, the chat box, and then um, you've got that for later on. <clears throat> so, what do we think? Let's see. What have people found? What have people taken away? Uh, reference matrix is the best thing ever. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we'll definitely use the matrix. How to reference manually? Automated referencing. Uh, Katie says that I needed to add bibliography separately. I think that I used to put references and bibliographies all together. Now, uh, it's a good point, that Katie, because in some um, areas that is best practice to put them all together. So it's not a wrong answer that you've you put in there. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but the, the I guess the preferred format for this particular qualification is to separate them out like that. So if you if you would, um, you would uh, uh, be in the, on the right page. Let me get this link to you for the posts that I've just put in there. Let's pop that in the chat box. There you go. Let's get involved. Let's get this chatting and let's share with everyone out there. How, how we got on. Um, right, so last thing I'm going to do then, I think, is I'm going to stick around after we've, we've uh, we'll switch the recording off after we finish as such, in case anyone does have any questions. But the last thing I want to do is go back to that score that we, we got at the beginning there. So we gave a score at the beginning um, on how you felt about uh, referencing. So let's have your scoring and as well as let's have a plus or minus whether it's gone up or down, if it's gone up one, if it's got plus one, if it's, if it's gone down two, minus two, let's find out what your differences are. Uh, um, let's see how we're getting on. Uh, all right, great, got a question about appendices, yeah. Let's sort these scores out, then we'll look at that appendices question. Uh, yeah, let's do that, let's do that. Let's see, uh, we're getting lots of scores going up. Look at that, eights and sevens and... Uh, definitely going up. Uh, wonderful to see. Wonderful to see. Everyone's putting plus figures. That's exactly what we want. If you're not there yet, if you're thinking, mm, or if you a plus zero or a minus some figures, um, get on that. Get on that um, forum as well. Let's have a chat about it. You know, I'll I'll do my best to answer your questions. But you know, if I'm not online at half past five or something tonight, somebody else might be able to chat to you or, or whichever. But it's good to it's good to get other people's interpretations of these things as well. Sometimes hearing other people's words sometimes helps things to make that bit more sense. Okay, well, th fantastic. Thanks for all your 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 input there. Right, what I think I'll do is I'll start to wrap things up then. Because, yeah, we're almost at one o'clock, a couple of minutes to go. I'm going to stop the recording now. So if you are watching the recording, hope you, hope you enjoyed that. And what we'll do is we'll, what I'm thinking of doing, actually, uh, for those people in the live where, webinar as well, so it's a great request that came in to do this uh, from Helen. I think it was Ian. Um, what, what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll do more webinars like this open to everyone to cover um, study skills. So I think I'll do the next one on word counts, on how to chip chip away a word count. I've got some examples I can show you on that. Maybe some how, maybe a webinar on how to um, deal with the kinds of language you get in an assessment. What does it mean if it says analyze this? What does it mean if it says evaluate that? We can look at some examples. Um, and then I think I'll probably roll them over. So four months from now, I'll come back and I'll do another, another session on uh, referencing, then do another one on word count. So you can either come for an update or we can get new people into the webinar. I think that's what we'll do. But let me know if you get any requests on things you want to have in, in webinars. Yeah, even better. Right, yeah, I'm going to stop recording.